You've heard about the gyroplane, the sport helicopter, and the ultralight. They're all fun to fly, but they're all a bit different. So let's take a few minutes now to look at each one of these types of flying machines. We'll see some areas where they're similar, but there are some major differences. First, the gyroplane. These are the modern day applications of the basic machine, the gyrocopter, which was invented by Igor Benson, a Russian immigrant aviation pioneer back in the 30s. The gyroplane actually predates the helicopter. It was used for mail runs and commercial purposes before the helicopter was invented. But because of world events and political influence, the helicopter became a lot better known. The gyroplane is like a helicopter in that instead of wings, it has a system of rotor blades. The spinning blades act like a pair of wings. When you watch the gyro fly, notice that the rotors are tipped slightly backward. That allows for the lift upwards as air is introduced under the rotor blades. A helicopter's lift is created when the powered rotor system is tilted forward and the machine is pulled along in flight. On a gyroplane, there's an engine right behind the pilot. That engine runs a propeller that pushes the craft forward. But the rotor blades are freewheeling, not powered by the engine itself as in a helicopter. Only the incoming wind makes the blades turn. That amounts to a major safety factor because since the blades are freewheeling, or as we call it in constant auto rotation, even if your engine should quit running, the blades continue to turn as you bring the craft back to earth for a safe landing. Taking off in a gyroplane is a matter of getting the blades up to speed, accelerating down the runway, and with the required control inputs, you're in the air. It doesn't take very many feet of runway space for you to get up and away. You're not going to set any speed records in a gyro, however. These craft are not as fast as airplanes. Cruising speed is only about 55 to 75 miles per hour. Some machines will fly faster, but those are specially made. You can fly about as high as you want, but most gyroplane pilots prefer to fly lower to enjoy the view and avoid the flow of fixed wing aircraft. You can be in the air for about two hours using a standard size gas tank. Some pilots fly cross country, but most recreational pilots just fly on short weekend trips at their local airports or at fly-ins. Bringing the craft in for a landing is even simpler than the takeoff. You descend, almost hovering over the runway, pull back on the cyclic for a little flare, and touch down. You'll roll to a stop in 20 feet or less. That's it, basically. Of course, there are a lot of things you must know and be able to demonstrate before you can take off in your own machine. That's where you need the help of a certified flight instructor. We'll talk more with and about these important people in the weeks to come. The helicopter and the gyroplane are both proven flying machines. The major difference between the helicopter and the gyroplane is the fact that the rotors on the helicopter are powered all the time by the engine. It pulls itself through the air and requires a tail rotor which keeps the helicopter flying straight. The gyroplane is always in auto rotation and is mechanically much less complex. Helicopters require much more training time than gyroplanes. They are also much more expensive to buy and maintain. There are many types of helicopters for many different uses. The sport helicopters are used for recreation. Many of these craft are flown just for the fun of it by weekend and hobby enthusiasts. Larger helicopters are used routinely by business and government agencies. Military helicopters are used for rescue efforts and play a vital link in our country's defense system. One obvious advantage helicopters have over gyros is the fact that helicopters can hover for a long time over one spot, regardless of the wind. The gyro can hover against a light wind, but it can't match the hover of the helicopter. Ultralights are the newest member of the sport flying family. Mainly, these are fixed wing aircraft and are usually bought in kit form where you build them yourself. Ultralight airplanes can be flown with about the same amount of training as with the gyroplane. Ultralights are very popular in the United States and overseas. People get together just as in custom car shows and look over different products and just to see what other people have built. Like the gyroplanes, ultralights aren't usually flown over great distances. Most of the pilots of ultralights and gyroplanes are people who enjoy flying in their spare time. Ultralights have various types of engines and airframe designs. Some of them have open cockpits, others enclosed. 
Any aircraft which weighs less than 254 pounds is considered to be an ultralight and does not require a license to fly. Above that weight, the craft is considered to be an airplane or gyroplane or helicopter. And the FAA requires pilots of these craft to receive training and obtain a license. The aircraft must be inspected and issued an airworthiness certificate. To carry a friend along, you must have a license. As with any type of sport aviation craft, ultralight pilots should have proper training before taking off on a flight. Inadequately trained pilots and poor equipment account for most of the accidents in this type of craft. Well, that's a look at the three most popular types of sport aircraft. Helicopters, gyroplanes, and ultralights. Whichever you make your craft of choice, you're guaranteed to have a great time in the skies. Getting training is the most important thing that you can do in flying fixed wing or rotor wing aircraft. Now in flying the gyroplanes, what you want to do is contact a certified flight instructor. Now we can get you a list of these guys that are available through the popular Rotorcraft Association or give us a call. We'll be glad to put you in touch with one near you. The scenario would go something like this. You're trying to find out if this is for you, if you want to learn how to fly these. Well, go fly with a CFI and get some uh, stick time. You know, he'd be glad to put you in the front seat of his machine or the back seat, take you up and see how you like it. And if you like it, you'll go to the next step, which would be to give us a call and we will uh, be glad to sell you a set of our How to Fly Gyros videotapes. And we have a uh, very good book here that we've put together that has a tremendous amount of information about flying the, the uh, gyros. Now these are not to replace the training, but these are to prepare you mentally to understand the terminology and all the, the techniques that are involved in flying a basic gyroplane. After you reviewed the videotapes and studied the materials in the book, You'll go back and you'll fly with that instructor for the next few hours. And after about four to five hours, the instructor should do, and if he doesn't, you need to ask for it, he should do some type of evaluation on you. And it's to go something kind of like this. Well, Steve, how am I doing with my training? You're doing real well, Dan. We can continue on with it. Yes. Or, well, Steve, how am I doing with my training? Dan, you need to take up bowling. Ooh. And assuming that you can walk, talk, and chew bubblegum, you'll continue your training and eventually get your license, just like our friend Maxie Wiles did at a recent event. Well, here goes Maxie Wiles in from a private pilot check ride, and we're going to have a little fun with Maxie, I think. We're going to go over, first of all, and find out if he passed his check ride, and if he did, we've got a surprise in for him. Let's go. Oh, no, no, it's mine. It's mine. Hey, 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 you. Hey, hey. <laughs> Along the way, you're going to build something more important than just machines, and that's friendships. I've made a lot of good friends over the past few years just being involved in this sport. Now, building this machine was a lot of fun, as you're going to see in this next clip. You're probably wondering about all this bracing and stuff that we've got here. Now, this is some of Max's own designs here, this extra bracing. But really and truly, you could probably put a 250-pound gorilla on this stuff, and it would hold. I, Max, do you think it hold? I believe it'll hold. Well, there's your 250-pound gorilla. Hold a cameraman. <laughs> well, the last question that comes up is about owning your own machine, and that is, should I buy a machine and then learn to fly? Well, here's what I recommend. I recommend that you get with a good certified flight instructor and get some training first, 
keep your investment low, and learning from that instructor what type of machine might be best suited for you, then purchase your machine. Now, if you want to build a custom machine like this, we even offer uh, how to build a gyroplane. Now, this is uh, pretty detailed information about building this particular machine, uh, and if you want a custom design, that's a good place to get started. Or you may choose to build a kit machine. Now, I've got some good news for you there. You want to be sure to tune in next week because we're going to start building, for you nuts and bolts fans out there, a kit machine from Air Command International. You don't want to miss that. So until next week, I want you to fly safe. I'm Dan Leslie. We'll see you then.